Okay, question five. This is our last video for this paper. I'm also my last piece of exam pad, so it was just meant to be. Right, Noah is a traveling salesman who lives in the United States of America, USA. He uses a map to estimate his traveling time between cities. Okay, on Annex D, so you go find your Annex Here it is, yeah. I would recommend that you have some highlighters. I have some highlighters with me. Um, it shows various cities. So there's the cities. Then it shows distances in miles between the cities. So let's just look at, for example, Springfield to Wush, 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 Worcester. <laughs> I don't know why it's so difficult to say. <laughs> I'm doing the Worcestershire. Um, distances between cities. So that's probably the 55. And then the time would be that, right? So this is distance. And this is what it is. It's in miles. So distance is in miles. And then this is in hours and minutes. So it'd be like one hour and five minutes. Okay, so we kind of know how to read it now. So let's go and see the questions. So it says, use Annex D to answer the questions that follow. Choose one letter, W, X, Y, or Z, that will make each of the following statements below true. The average time in hours to travel from Lee, between Lee and Springfield is, okay. Let's go find these things. So we're looking for Lee. Um, so Lee is over here. And we're going to Springfield. So that would be our time, right? So don't say 41, because 41 is going to be your distance. Your time is going to be 50 minutes. So which one of these looks most accurate? It's not 50 over 100, it's 50 over 60, right? Because there are 60 minutes in a hour. So be very careful there not to make that silly mistake. Okay, um, so that's A. Let's then go on to the next one. Which city lies southeast of Boston? Oh, goodness me. Okay, so there's north, right? So there's north. So that would be east. Oh, wow. That would be south and that would be west. Okay, so it said southeast. So southeast is over here and it's from Boston. So southeast is going to be either Brook Brookton or Plymouth. Let's see what we have there. Not Providence, not Lowell, not Gloucester, 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 wow, my English, Plymouth. So I would say it's Plymouth, it is C, I mean not C, Z. Okay, so it is Z being Plymouth. Okay, right, so let's continue. Noah found that the same time, one hour and five minutes, is estimated for traveling from Providence to Boston and from Springfield to Wish, Wish, Worcestershire. <laughs> okay, um, so write down the actual distances in miles from Providence to Boston. So Providence to Boston, and then from Springfield to Worcestershire. Um, that's going to be a W, okay. So let's look at the map. Okay, so we need Providence. So let's find Providence. Okay, there's Providence. And where are we going? Providence to Boston. So it's 52 miles. Okay, and then we want Springfield to Worcestershire, which is 55 miles. So same time, one hour and five minutes, but different um, distances. Okay. <clears throat> So then it says, give one possible reason why the map indicates the same traveling time. Oh, let me show you what I'm reading. Goodness gracious. Give one reason, possible reason, why the map indicates the same traveling time for these two different distances. Okay, so it could be just um, different speed limits, right? Um, different speed limits. It could also be volumes of traffic. Um... It could be um, number of traffic lights. It could be um, conditions of the roads, right? If there's lots of potholes, we know that in South Africa, you have to drive more slowly, right? Um, well, you should. <laughs> um, so, so you could give any sort of logical reason there. It only said one, so don't now be writing 15, right? You're not going to get more marks. So that's that there. This next question uh, is such a cool question. Um, so let's look at it. It said, Noah traveled from Portland, passing three cities, A, B, and C, in the table, to reach his destination city, D. 
Table one below shows the time taken to travel between various unknown cities indicated by A, B, C, and D. Time taken between cities. Okay, so this is actually such a cool exercise. So we're starting in Portland. Okay, so let's make sure we can see this. Okay, he's starting here in Portland. And from Portland, he takes a trip of one hour and 35 minutes. Okay, so he has to go here to Newsbury. That's all he, where he can go. Okay, so that is going to be A. Okay, so it's a Newsbury. Then when he's a news when he once he's a Newsbury, he travels for half an hour. So that's 40 minutes, that's half an hour. So he's going to go right to Lawrence. Okay, so Lawrence is going to now be B. Okay. Then from there he travels for 35 minutes. So where's 35 minutes away from Lawrence? It's Boston. Okay, so Boston is now going to be C. Okay, right? Do you see? This is quite cool. And then from Boston, he travels one hour. So where from Boston is one hour? No, no, no. He has one hour. Worcestershire. Okay. Um, and that's going to be D. So now we're going to label all of them. You know, you see how we just read this so beautifully. We're so smart, right? So we have A. B, C, and D. So we're just going to label them now because that's what the question asks. It says name the cities. So A is going to be Newberry Port. B is going to be Lawrence. C is going to be Boston, right? And I'm just looking here. Do you see here? And then Worcestershire. Okay, right? It's such a cool question. Whoever said this was so cool. Right. Let's move on to our next question. The fuel tank of Noah's car has a capacity of 23 gallons, right? That's the unit, that's the type of um, measurement in the United States. In South Africa, we would use liters, right? Noah claims that in South Africa, it will cost him less than 1,400 rand to fill up his fuel tank to capacity, right? Petrol will be expensive for days, right? So one gallon equals 3,785 liters and fuel cost is this much. So the question asks, it says, verify with calculations whether his claim is valid. Okay, so what we're going to do, so a couple of things we need to do. So we basically need to firstly work out how many liters there are, right, in this 23 gallons. So that's how we're going to start. So we're going to say, okay, 5.1.4. So we have 23 gallons and each gallon is this many liters. So we're going to times it by 3.785. And that will tell us how many liters we have. Okay, so 23 times 3.785. So it's going to be 87.055 liters. Okay, don't round it off yet. So now each of those liters is going to cost him, right? It's going to cost him, let me just show you, 15 rand and 97. You're imagining that would be such a nice price for petrol currently. It's so expensive. Okay, so that's it. So now you have the times of its cost. Okay, and that's how much it's going to cost to fill up. Round it off to two decimal places because it's going to be two seven, right? Why? Because the third decimal place is eight, which is above five. So you round up. There's your answer. But we're not done because it said verify with calculations whether his claim is valid. So his claim was that the cost would be less than 1,400 Rand. It is less than. Um, 1,400 Rand, it's 1,390 Rand and 27 cents. So then you say, claim is valid. Don't forget to write this, right? You get a mark allocated for that. And students always forget that. And it, it's like, it's such a, um, like a horrible place to lose marks because it's not like you didn't understand. You just didn't finish like your thought kind of thing. Okay, we've only got two more questions left of this video and this paper. We're doing such a good job, right? Let's go and finish. So I'm just closing all my highlighters here. Okay. So Noah stays in Greenfield and travels to Fitchburg and back from Monday to Friday. Okay, let's just find this on this little map. So where does it say he said? He stays in Greenfield. So where he's... Oh, here we go. Here's he at. Okay, so he's here and he travels to Fitchburg every day. So those are some important metrics, right? So that we know where we're working. Okay. Perfect. So that's sort of where we're working. 
it says he fills his car's fuel tank on Monday morning. Okay. So that's before he goes from Greenfield to Fitchburg um, for the first time in the week. The fuel consumption of his car is 18 miles per gallon. Okay. So basically one gallon of, pe of um, petrol gets him 18 miles worth of distance. He refuels his car to capacity as soon as he does not have enough fuel to complete a trip. So basically, if he can't either get home from Fitchburg to Greenfield, or if he can't get from home, Greenfield, to Fitchburg where his work, okay? Um, so then it says, okay, then it says, determine the number of gallons of fuel left in his car's tank on arrival in Greenfield on Friday afternoon. Okay, so we know that how many gallons he has 23 gallons that is the capacity right of his car we know that from the previous question so we then have to say okay 23 and we have to times it by 18 basically you're saying how many miles does he get from this capacity right because we know that from each gallon he gets 18 so how much is he going to get from each so we're going to say 23 times 18 so he's going to get 414 miles, right, from one tank, okay? Now, how many miles is it from Greenfield to Fitchburg? Let's look on our map, okay? It is 49 miles. So we're going to say it's 49 miles. So let's do this, and we say, okay... We're going to say 414 divided by 49, basically saying how many trips can he make, right, using this one um, this one fuel, fuel tank or tank of fuel. So we're going to divide it by 49, and that gives me 8.4489, da, 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 da. So it gives him eight full trips, and part, right, this will, is part of a trip, Okay. So let's just make sure we understand this. Because the question said that he refuels his car to capacity as soon as he does not have enough fuel. So after eight trips, he would then go and fill up his car again because he wouldn't have enough petrol to get him either home um, to Greenfield or back to Fitchburg. So let's do the eight trips. He has Greenfield and he has Fitchburg. Okay. One trip. One trip there, so that would be Monday, Tuesday. So these are that's two trips, two trips. Then on Wednesday, the same, right? Then on Thursday, there's another two trips. Thursday, okay. So there's my eight trips. So now we're on Friday. So now on Friday, he would have filled up in the morning on Friday in order to get to work because that would be his ninth trip. Right, so he would have filled up there, driven to work, right, and then he would have driven home. So let's see when the the um, question is asking us to calculate how much fuel he has, like at what point in time. It says, determine the number of gallons of fuel left in his car's tank on arrival in Greenfield on Friday afternoon. Okay, so... We know that he would have filled up. Okay, so he goes one, two, three, four, one, two. Okay, cool. So he would have filled up over there. Okay, so he would have had 23, right, in the morning on Friday, right? He would have had 23 on the, um, in the morning. Then he would have used fuel to get home. I mean, to, to um, Fitchburg. Right? So how much fuel does it take to get to Fitchburg? Well, let's go and figure out how much it's going to take him to get to Fitchburg. So we're going to say it's going to each day, how much fuel is it going to take? Well, let's just see. Right? We have how many gallons? 414. So we're going to say, okay, we have 23 gallons. Sorry, the 414 is the miles. We have 23 gallons. So we're going to say 23 gallons. And we're going to divide that, right, by hmm, 8.4489, okay? So we're going to divide that, and it's going to tell us per trip how many gallons he's going to use. So we're going to say 23, right, and divided by the answer, 
and that is how many gallons it takes for one trip. Okay, so that's one trip just from Green, Greenfield to Fitchburg, right? So over here, he would have had 23 in the morning and it wants to know how much he'll have when he comes back to Greenfield, right? That Friday. So it's going to be two of these trips. So we're going to say 23 minus this 2.72, etc. But we're going to times that by two because it's from Greenfield to Fitchburg and then Fitchburg back. Because the question says, right, determine the number of gallons of fuel left in his car's tank on arrival in Greenfield on Friday afternoon. So it's very important to understand where, where we're going, right? So we've done the eight. We've written that off, right? He's filled up again on Friday morning when he's in uh, Greenfield. He's driven to work. That's going to be 2.7222, etc. Then he's driven back from Fitchburg back to Greenfield, and that's going to be another one of those. Okay, so we're going to say, okay, he had 23 in the morning, and we're going to take our answer and subtract it time well, subtract it but times by two first before we subtract it because he went from Greenfield to Fitchburg and Fitchburg back to Greenfield, and our answer is going to be 7.5. Six. Why am I doing that? I'm rounding it off to two decimal places. Look at my third decimal. It's five. Five and above we round up. So that is how much he's going to have. Okay. So it's not actually a very easy question, this, but sort of drawing it out. And that's why I did it quite slowly because you really have to understand what you're doing, right? So if you didn't understand that, go back, right? Because it kind of is important to, to make sure that you understand it. Firstly, you want to say, how many miles does, does um, his full tank get him? How many trips? When would he have refueled? How many gallons does he have per trip? Make sure that you're thinking through each of these trips. Okay, let's do our last question now, which is 5.2. 5.2, let's do it together. So this one is a little bit of an algebraic question again, um, which... It's kind of a, not a bad note to end a paper on, but let's make sure we understand it. A temperature reading of negative 7 degrees Celsius was displayed on the screen on the dashboard of Noah's car. Determine to the nearest 10 the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so basically they've given us this and we need to find that. Okay, so let's do this together. Literally just sub it in. Okay, so you see I've just put the negative 7 in there. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we want to get F by itself. So this is where we are going to now use our opposite operation. So we can get rid, we want to get rid of 5 over 9. So we're going to times it by 9 over 5. What you do to the one side, you have to do to the other side. So these cancel and that becomes like this. This side is going to become... Um, 9 over 5 times negative 7, negative 63 over 5, okay? Now, this is subtracted, so now we want to add it to this side. What we do to the one side, you must do to the other side. So then we're going to, those two things are going to cancel, which are going to just leave me with F. This I'm going to add 32 to, and my answer is going to be 19.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's make sure that we've answered our question. It does say to the nearest 10. The nearest 10 to this would be 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And that would be your answer. Okay, so a lot of this is algebra. So if you are confused with these algebra questions, there are very few of them. But you should be able to think about opposite operations, right? And that's saying, what's the opposite of plus? It's a minus. What's the opposite of times? Divide. And you go from there. Okay, that's the paper done. Good luck for your exam. And um, yeah, I, I'll be thinking of you.